All right, guys, welcome back to a tournament breakdown, stop number three of the Bassmaster Open. I'm going to call this the Bassmaster Open Saga because I'm going to go and tell you guys, this is going to be a really long season. We're only three events in so far, and a lot of things happened this week. You know, obviously, I got to backtrack just for a second and kind of apologize, but not really apologize. I didn't post anything from the Toledo Bend Bassmaster Open for two reasons. Number one, I did not catch them. And I did catch a lot of fish, on, at least on the first day, but I can't really divulge how I was catching them or even not catching them in that situation. There was too many landmarks around. There's too many things that I, that I fish all the time around here that I really didn't want to show everybody. And I apologize, but, but not really. I, I'm just not going to show everything uh, from my home lake that I literally is in my backyard. I wasn't going to show everything. So I apologize in advance that you are not going to see any footage from that particular event. But Bugs Island, you know, going into this particular event, I was told, and, and it's a legendary place for a lot of reasons, but it's legendary because it's one of the best bit, uh, bush flipping lakes in the country, or at least I'd always heard it was just like this tremendous place to go catch them in the bushes, you know, willow trees, buck bushes, all these different kind of trees in the water. That's not what I got when I got there. When I arrived to the lake, I didn't see any of that at all. You know, actually what I did on the first day of practice is I put my troll motor down and I just started looking, you know, because I really believed that I could find some sight fish there. I never heard anything about sight fish there. I'd never seen anything about bed fish, fry garters, anything like that, actually using your eyes to see the bass. And so that's what I did. I put my troll motor down and I just trusted my gut in that situation and honestly, after the first day of practice, I, I called Todd Castledon and I was like, dude, like I've seen a bunch of fish today, but I haven't seen the quality that, uh, that I wanted to see. I'm not going to say I didn't see the quality that I expected, but I really wanted to, to find some four and five pounders. And I, the biggest fish I saw was a five pounder, but then the next biggest fish I saw was just over three pounds or what I expected to be just over three pounds. So I was a little bit concerned, you know, I, at that point, you know, I'd had this expectation of what I felt like the weights were going to be going into the event. And, you know, that kind of like went down a little bit. I really expected the weights 14, 15 pounds to be the top 40 cut, you know, 16, 17 pounds a day to make the top 10. Well, once I saw the quality of the fish up there on the bank and I saw a bunch of fish that day. I didn't see what I needed to see, and I was like, all right, the weights aren't going to be there. So the next day, I go out and practice, and I spent all day looking again. You know, I, I think I fished for like two hours out offshore, and I caught a limit, and honestly, it just, I didn't feel like I was doing the right thing, if that makes sense. Uh, so I hit the bank, and for like eight hours or nine hours, however long it was, the, the length of the amount of time that I could practice I had my troll motor on high and I was buzzing the bank and I was just looking. At this point, I'd only caught about five or six bass the entire practice, you know. So there's, this only two days in, or a day, actually only about a day and a half because uh, a long story, but I didn't practice the entire time uh, for this particular event. You know, I, I didn't even get there until Saturday afternoon. I launched the boat and I fished for about three hours. Uh, and so I looked those three hours. The next day I fished for the first couple and then I looked the rest of the day. Well, then it happened. Monday, we get this big monsoon comes in and it's all around the lake and it rains and it rains and it rains some more. So I don't even practice on Monday because at this point I'm like, what am I really going to learn on the day that it's raining? If I go out there and get a bunch of bites, probably won't be able to duplicate that in the tournament because we weren't going to have those same conditions. Second day of practice, the water has come up at this point about two feet. Like, okay, okay. Kind of expected the water to come up. Kind of threw a wrench in my game plan. Because when you're looking at bed fish and you're looking at fry garters and you've got all these these fish that you're physically looking at and the water comes up, and it didn't necessarily dirty the water up, but it just came up, it basically took that whole sight fishing thing out and just threw it out the window on me. Uh, so knowing the history of the lake, you know, doing my research and practice, or, you know, pre-practice, I'd learned that one of the big deals there was flipping bushes. Well, I'm going to just tell you guys, I really like flipping bushes. And that's when I locked the flipping stick in my hand on that second day. 
or I guess my second full day of practice. And I got a little clue from a buddy of mine on, on what bait to flip. And I went to work on them. So here is a little bit of how my day went at Bugs Island, picking up the flipping stick and just going to work and forgetting everything that I went and practiced. And I just ran a lot of new stuff and, and I hope y'all enjoy. Two and a half, three pounds. Yeah, that's a three pound there. Okay, you can't put it in there. <laughs> Alright guys, I just caught my first fish of the day and easily one of the best fish of the day by far. I made a really gutsy call. I just started running new water. I got to literally the last tree in this stretch. I mean it's now you see some some other bushes and stuff behind me, but they weren't set up right. This was the last tree that had enough water on it that a fish would live on. And I almost did not make the flip into this into this particular tree. And I'm so glad I did. I mean, because it was such a clutch fish. It definitely made the trip to weigh in, no question about it. And it definitely made my life a lot better. But I want to talk about one thing real quick. I, you're going to notice that I'm wearing sun gloves. I, I'm wearing sun gloves while I'm flipping and you know obviously I had a little bit of a skin cancer scare at the beginning of the year and I've tried my best to be more on top of that you know wearing my sun gloves these are actually glacier gloves sun gloves and I want to I want to point something out to you guys you know I, a lot of times and and I was I'm definitely at fault here uh, I actually felt like if you wear these gloves you know they have a little bit of leather on the hand that my rod would slip out of my hand. You know, that's like my biggest fear. Like one of my biggest fears is when I set the hook that that rod is going to tumble. And I'm going to tell you, it actually felt better wearing the gloves flipping than it did not wearing them. And I know that it's kind of a strange concept. And some of you might be like, oh, he's just trying to push a sponsor or whatever. And y'all can say whatever you want. I would literally go back there and call and I would take my gloves off because I hated sticking my hand in the water with gloves on. It just kind of threw me off. But they'd end up getting wet anyway from like lip and bass or whatever. But I would leave my gloves off for like a minute or two minutes. And it it my rod felt so uncomfortable without those gloves on that I, I'd get back there and I'd put them back on because I had so much more control over the rod and the grip on it was so much better. Like it, you know how like when you're, fi you're flipping bushes, you're flipping grass or anything like that, you get all these little cuts and scrapes all over your hands. It's just like brutal battle on your hands nonstop when you're flipping. And I didn't have that. I mean, you can look at my hands right now and they look good. Well, I mean, kind of good. But I don't have all the cuts and bruises and scrapes and all that stuff from what I would normally the wear and tear of fishing. And those glacier gloves definitely protected me. You're going to see me wearing them the rest of the year. I'm just going to tell you. I enjoyed wearing them. They were comfortable, but if you want a really good quality pair of sun gloves, get you some Glacier gloves. These are the ones I wear. I wear a bunch of different colors. They're, uh, you know, you wash them in the washing machine when they get smelling bad, because I'm going to tell you, these start smelling bad by the end of the event. But get you some, you'll really, really like them. Uh, they, these are definitely the ones that I wear. What about now? You're tired now, aren't you? Uh, Social so Security Disability. Gotcha. Means I don't need a whole lot of them. Those rods with the green things at the base, you know, the green color at the base. Uh -huh. You know what they cost me? Okay. How much? $49.99. There you go. Bass Pro Shop Turning. They're actually really good. He's going to keep. I was telling the fish to stay on. Okay. Oh, look at the, the side of them. Yeah, I know. He's got a big old swirl. Three. Can we get close to this so I can cut the left? Can you give me just a minute? Yeah. Thank you. That's right. 
call. Oh. oh, that's a wrong one. Stay buttoned up. Stay buttoned up. Stay buttoned up. Oh, it's a long. It's a So that last fish catch guys going in and getting that fish out of the bush that was a really good fish for me and it gave me a lot of positive momentum one thing about this particular tournament is i'll be completely honest the water i ran in the event was not the water i practiced on and i know that's going to sound super crazy to some people and some people are going to be like man why did you not go fish everything that you knew had bass on it but what i had figured out was I could just look at banks, I could look at pockets, I could look at all these places and I knew exactly where these fish were setting up. I just, I, I got super dialed in, like to the nth degree of what to look for. Now I'm not going to say I was just looking for bushes, I was just looking for willows and I was just looking for hardwood. It could have a mixture of all that. It just had to look right. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but like the bushes had to have the right depth of water, but I could run down the lake and I could look in at the bushes and I could tell if they had the right amount of water on. If they were sticking way, way up out of the water. I didn't get as many good bites off those. Now, granted, I could get bit off of all of those bushes, but the ones that I got even more bites on were the ones that were sucked down in the water a little bit, had a little bit more depth. And the more isolated, the better. You know, the first day I'm running pockets, I'm running the backs of pockets, and it's a cycle of boats. You know, Bobby Lane and I were, were just basically jumping pocket to pocket on top of each other. And not, not to even name a few of the other guys, you know, it, it was actually really incredible how many guys, and not even how many guys, because there really wasn't that many guys uh, fishing in the same general area I was, but the, the guys, how good they did after day one. And so you really had to pick it apart. You really had to figure out how to catch these fish. And it was all about finding those places that had maybe not had a boat in them for an hour or two hours or maybe even all day. The better ones were the ones that obviously you rolled up and nobody hit them yet and you caught fish after fish after fish. So, you know, that fish right there getting hung on the top of that bush, that was a really key bite. If you notice one thing that I did there, Isaac, I extended my arm out and I wanted that bait to have as much of a vertical fall. In that situation, I couldn't press the button fast enough to be able to get the bait to fall vertical. So I actually extended my arm, let the bait fall, shook it once, fish ate it, and then I set the hook. Not the most orthodox uh, hook set that you would ever ask for, but it got the job done and I was able to land the fish. So let's carry on. Let's look at a couple more of these fish catches and I'll break down exactly what I'm looking at. Whoa. That's a good one. Stop it. Stop it. So this particular fish was in an area that I had actually practiced in. It was one of the only places that I actually revisited that I had already fished. But one thing is for sure in this particular, uh, for this particular fish catch, it was so important to drop my power poles. You know, all day long, I was dropping my poles, flip, 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 picking them up, going 10 or 15 feet, dropping them again, flip, flip, flip. And a lot of times I was able to break down that water even more. In this situation, 
I'd actually caught three fish without even moving the boat. Uh, this third fish I caught, it, it happened to be one of the better ones, and it definitely made uh, its trip to weigh in. And so overall, really, really good fish. There she is. I don't like that. You knew where it was. I didn't know where it was. Well, again, another three pounder. So this is the last fish catch of the day, and honestly it was one of those last minute decisions i'd actually the the last day of practice the the day that i practiced the full last full day i was out there throwing a floating worm and i had this particular fish come up on a float worm out of a ball of fry and you hear my coin in the back he's kind of jawing at me because he's like oh you knew where that bass was i knew it was in this general vicinity but when i rolled into this pocket as you can tell the water color was way dirtier and I was like, there's absolutely no chance I can see this fish. So I just started blind flipping around the area. And luckily within about five flips, I landed on her and she ate it. And it culled a pound and three quarter uh, bass. So it was a really big cull. It culled me up there that 13 pound 10 mark and definitely was the fish I needed at the time. But it's all about making those last minute decisions sometimes. Making that clutch call on catching that clutch bass. Because that bass alone, that one right there, could mean the difference of me making the Elite Series and missing the Elite Series. So that's the one thing about the Bassmaster Opens. A lot of times it comes down to one bass. So here it goes weigh-in. That's two and a quarter. That's a pound and a half. Two and a quarter pound and a half. You're doing good. Oh, that one's sick. That's a seven pounder now. <laughs> oh shit, this is leaking. How many is in there? Five. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's quite I'm thinking it's twelve and a half. That's what you're thinking? Yeah. Hopefully I'm wrong. I just pulled the number out of my hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is the part of the post spawn that kind of sucks. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. Uh, every one of my fish that I had was really long. I had two real skinny fish and I actually overestimated what my weight was. I actually thought I had just a little bit over 14 pounds and I mean like a hair over, not very much over, but I did think I had 14 pounds. And I did not. I had 13 pounds, 10 ounces, which landed me in 20th place. So I'm not complaining. I was a little bit disappointed in myself for kind of overvaluing the size of the fish. Now granted, I was only off about eight or nine ounces, but in the scheme of how close these weights were, eight or nine ounces was a big deal. And I, I wasn't, I mean, it didn't cost me any weight. It just kind of stunk whenever I got the weight wrong because I, I hate over guessing on my weight. And I did a little bit uh, on this particular day, but Overall, a fantastic day. Caught a lot of fish. Uh, I only showed you a handful of the fish catches. I didn't even show you everything because uh, there was so much footage. But overall, first day of Bugs Island, it went according to plan. You know, second day, not sure what to expect. I know that, you know, obviously I caught a lot of fish today and I know kind of what to look for. So I have an expectation of that I'm going to be able to get some bites and hopefully be able to cash a check, 
get some valuable angler of the year points and move up in the standing. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Really helps me out when y'all do that. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it guys. Make sure y'all stay tuned for the next one.